Hello friends from the internet and welcome back to Alidi. Thank you guys for another week. Welcome to the Halloween month as well. We are doing some nice Halloween themes during this month of October for all our Halloween fans. That's why we're doing this really cool and amazing episode about one of my favorite movies especially in these spooky times the movie that we're gonna talk about today is Coraline I will tell you a little bit about information on the movie some fun facts some of the theories and also some nice easter eggs during the movie so get ready get comfortable and let's start Wandering her rambling old house in her boring new town, Coraline, played by Dakota Fanning, discovers a hidden door to a fantasy version of her life. In order to stay in the fantasy, she must make a frightening real sacrifice. Ooh. This movie is amazing because it's done by Laika. Laika is a studio that does stop motion. If you don't know what stop motion is, It's a really cool art of making movies by puppets that are made to move in the movie or like the environments. And you have to move it frame by frame to make the flowy movement during recording of the film. In these stop motions, they tend to use like ob objects from the real life that they can convert to the screen to be something different. An example of that, I watch a um, nice YouTube video about how they made the costumes for the Beldam and the mother of Coraline and they were saying like for the sweater that Coraline's mother was using they used like the top of a sock to make the little patterns on the bottom of the sweater to make it look like an actual sweater you can use different type of things to just like make something completely different on this tiny world and I know that we also see videos about the behind the scenes on the mechatronics on how they move stuff so that's a really cool thing if you like those kind of things there's a lot of it on YouTube in the Leica page they show you how like they did the blooming flowers so the blooming flowers was dog toy and the motion of it created the the motion of the flowers on the scene of the garden this movie is so insane guys you know like it's so well thought every piece of it the theories that the people get to see on this movie are insane and i think they are kind of valid almost all the time because it makes a lot of sense so first let's talk about theories One of the greatest contrapositions on this movie is that the director did the two worlds completely different. So we have this real world that is muted and sad and dark, doesn't give like a lot of joy when you see it. So that's the reality of Coraline and it gives this feeling of sadness that she's not happy in this world. But when we go to the other world, the other world is super colorful, it has amazing color combinations, everything is magic, everything is beautiful, everything is perfect. At the point that you want to eat the food that you see in the movie. Have you seen those foods? I'm going to eat all the chicken, all the gravy that she's eating and that mango smoothie looks so good. But yeah, so just to say that this other world gives more like of a nice vivid place that you want to live there you want to be there because it's so nice and it, it attracts the eye it attracts the person it attracts Coraline into this be a better reality than the one that she has so let's start with the first theory that is YB doesn't exist in the original story in the book many say that they added YB to be a comic relief during the movie but they said that they also added YB maybe to talk to Coraline, someone that Coraline talks to because in the book she doesn't talk to anyone so she talks to herself and in the movie maybe the viewers will see that differently and it will be difficult to comprehend who she's talking to so they added the character YB to be able to have someone to be the friend of Coraline and also like her emotion relief he represents her emotions on the screen we can see how Coraline will be feeling during the book on some part when she kind of realized that she's in a weird place and really like having a bad time with these people on the other world but on the movie she's having a greatest time and YV represents like the danger is coming and there is a creepy or weird feeling happening 
but also YB is the one that helps Coraline to snap out of the other world's magic, shows her the true danger that it is. Another great theory is the insect theme. If you see closely in the movie, when you go on Coraline's house in the real world, the wallpaper in the living room where the little door is, it is covered on an insect wallpaper. And this insect theme is everywhere when you go into the other world as well. So you see that on the wallpapers in the other world, you see a lot of insects, you see the dragonflies on Coraline's room. And also when Coraline is opening the shower the first time on the real world this time, she sees a lot of tiny bugs and she smashed them. We can see clearly that there's a lot of insects starting to appear when she starts to be in this house, meaning that these insects are representing the Beldam. Because the Beldam is actually an arachnic predator, maybe this is the way to saying that there is something related to Beldam. Dun, dun, dun. Second theory, it's about the button eyes. Then we can more go in deep onto it. Normally we see that the eyes are the windows of the soul. A good metaphor here is that there are no eyes, they're just buttons, means that they have no soul. So everything on the other world has no soul and is something that is being created to a purpose by the Beldam. And even herself, because she has buttons over her eyes, she gave her soul to create this world. So she has a special link with this other world, but she's also prison on this other world. She needs the souls to eat and to maintain her power on the other world. Then that's why the theory of the eyes goes really well in place. But then we can see as well another theory that the other world is not hers by right. Like she stumbled upon it maybe at some point and then gave her soul to be able to control the world and be able to stay in it. Another great theory or question is why the Beldam is obsessed with games. Maybe they say it's because she lives alone and she doesn't have anything. Even the cat says it on at one time. Maybe she wants something to love. Maybe she wants something to wait for. So maybe because she's alone all this time and she only has the cat and the children that appear in the world, she doesn't get any other interaction to anything else. So she needs a way of being entertained. Going back to the theory of the botanizing that the Beldam gave her soul to be on this other world, we can see kind of like on the end when Coraline just defeats her and closes the door that she becomes frenetic and is like, please don't leave me, don't leave me. And she gets really scared, we will say. So maybe she's scared of something else that is in the other world. There is another entity, another monster that has more power than her. On the scene that I just said uh, for the other theory, when Coraline crosses the door and the hand snaps out of it of the bell dam, is a reference to the book. In the book, when Coraline is doing the deal with the bell dam, she says, swear it, and she swears by her mother, but then Coraline says, I don't trust you swear by something different. So she says, okay, I swear on my right hand that if you win, I will let you go. But as we can see on the movie, in the book as well, is that Coraline is not free, so the Beldam doesn't want her to go. And that's why she loses her right hand when Coraline closes the door quickly. So because that was the, the deal, she will cut off her hand. One of the greatest questions and theories, I will say, is why Coraline's parents forgot about the Beldam. At some point, if you remember right, the parents were kidnapped. They will put like little hands doing eh, eh. We don't know if they were kidnapped or it was just a, 
a ruse by the Beldam to allure Coraline. Either way, it was a way to allure Coraline into the other world. Her parents disappeared for a long time. And when they came back, they had the snow on, on them. They were completely oblivious of what had happened. And Coraline doesn't tell them because she's not sure they do remember. So what happened? Why did they forget? I saw a YouTuber, Annalise Wood, that says it is maybe because, well, the Beldam is an original evil fairy and she has power. So maybe with her power, she just wipe their minds. Like, she just like erase whatever happened and they don't remember anything. Who knows? One of the other greatest theories is who is the boy on the picture on Coraline's house? And some people say it's the cat itself, that maybe it was one of the Beldam's victims and then he came back as a cat or he escaped and she transformed him into a cat, like in Ojos Pocus. But there were also some theories that the boy on the painting is just the little boy ghost that we see that Coraline encounters. But some people were saying like, yeah, no, they're not the same. They don't look similar. So it's not completely clear. One of the people I heard as well says that maybe Coraline's family had this painting before because they were unpacking. But in my humble opinion, this cannot be because when we see the movie, she arrives, she opens a box, the first box to unpack something. And the first thing that Coraline and the family unpack are the little snow globes that her mom collects. So the painting was already in the house when they arrived. So maybe it was something from the building? There are a lot of theories about this, guys. It's really difficult to know. But one of the greatest that I heard as well that I think it can go well with this is that the blue boy is something important for the Beldam because even on the other world the painting is still there the painting changes just to make the illusion that we are in another world in a better world because we see in the real world that the boy is sad and he lost his ice cream but in the other world he has his ice cream he's eating it and he has three scoops more than the other one the other world is better but it's not people think that the other boy is Maybe the son of the Beldam? They have a lot of theories on this, guys. And I'm not sure if that is right. Maybe it is. It has a lot of foundation. But I will let you guys go into it and hear about it and see if maybe that is your theory as well. Another character that has a lot of theories is the cat. The cat is an ambiguous character on this movie. We don't know where he comes from, why is he here, why is he helping Coraline at some point, but then at some others, he's kind of not helping her. So uh, I will say maybe he is not that related to Coraline, and maybe that's why he doesn't help her that much at, at the beginning. But then he starts to see that the Beldam is kind of getting back to her old ways. That is why he maybe starts to help Coraline to try to not get her killed as well as the other children. But we don't know if this cat knew all the story from before or if it wasn't really old cat and knew all the other ghosts or it was just because he enters and gets out of the older world's house all the time that he noticed something is wrong on this world or maybe he only knows because he's a cat and has that sense who knows but like if you want more details about it i will not touch on the theories on the cat because there are a lot of them there is too many <laughs> for me to cover i will say go into youtube avid frank has the really good ones and if not like search there's so many of them other greatest theories are there are more monsters that we are seeing on the other world as i was saying before in another theory 
the Beltam is kind of trapped into this other world. She is kind of afraid of something. Avid Frank has a lot of theories and videos about this movie, and she explains in one of them that maybe the corridor, the tunnel between the doors, is a monster itself. It feeds on the souls of the children. Maybe that's why the Bell Dam has to chase children, not only for her, for her powers, but to maintain this entity. Even in the movie, we can see something weird on it. We can see how it palpitates. There is a lot of description on the book about this tunnel. She also did a really recent one about the mist and how the mist is also described as a monster or as an entity on the book. And we can see on the movie how it does this movement of stars crawling up into the pink palace when Coraline gets more into the other world. So maybe there is a connection as well. But this also ties up into another theory that someone else has. Uh, I think it's called The Theorizer on YouTube. And he says maybe is that the other mother has control over the whole world. Not only on the other world, but she has kind of a control on the pink palace. So she kind of controls the clouds and the mist that is appearing and it kind of starts englobing the pink palace and Coraline when she gets more closer to the other world. Also maybe the, the tunnel, who knows? But there is a bit of discrepancy here. I would say maybe the other mother has kind of a control on the real world but there is also an entity on the other world that gets her trap, that she's scared of that other entity. My theory is she has the power, but there is also something else that has more power than her. Chan chan chan. And perhaps the bestest theory of all is the end of Coraline. How do we interpret this? On my part, I think there is still a big connection to the other world. We see Caroline defeat the Bell Dam and everything, and then she gets a warning by the three ghost children that she still is in danger after all that she has done. And they say specifically it's because of the key. There's only one key, and if she finds it, then you are clearly in danger. So Coraline decides to do something with this key to get rid of it. She thinks about the well, the well that we see at the beginning. But this well is weird. Check it out, guys. There is many things on fairy folklore that this ring of mushrooms is a perfect circle circling the well. So the well maybe is a portal, a fairy port. And so this portal maybe goes into the other world. Dun, dun. It's weird because the cat at the beginning, when she tries to get rid of the key because she's going out of her room, he kind of intercepts her and says like, no, don't do it, don't go there. But it's weird why he will say, no, don't throw it on the well if he will know that that's the right thing to do. Is either the cat evil or maybe there's something else. The well has a portal into the other world. So many people say, that Coraline actually throw the key into a portal. Other mother got the key back. And why? At the end, when Coraline is in the garden planting the tulips, we see a wide shot happening and we see that the garden has the shape that had on the other world. So the face of the Beldam because now it's not flourish, it doesn't be the face of Coraline, but more the face of the Beldam. So there is still a connection there. So the Beldam is still not defeated. And another part that we see this theory arise is because at the end, end when we see the pink palace white shot, we see the cat and the cat kind of goes into a portal. So if you remember correctly, when the cat was on the other world, he told Coraline that there were many other portals that she didn't know about and that gave him the access to the other world. If the other world was indeed defeated and didn't exist or it didn't have the power 
that he had before, he could not use the portals because if you remember again, when Coraline took the eyes of the children, the other world was crumbling down, it didn't exist anymore. So all the other portals that were before were destroyed. And this is specified on the book. The cat says that it was all destroyed. The other portals were destroyed and he was freaked out because there was just a door to get out of this other world. So what it gets here again is that the portals were restored. So if they were restored, it means that the other world is still alive and well, they got the key back and some other people say that maybe Coraline didn't make it. It's a big possibility, but we will never know. And that's the cool thing about this ending. Well, now let's talk about something fun, like fun facts. The movie took 18 months to shoot and apparently Neil Gaiman sent the manuscript to Henry Selick when he finished the book. Fun fact number two. Neil Gaiman was inspired by the stories his daughter Holly wrote. His daughter was telling him, please write a book with the stories that I have been doing. And she wrote about her mother being replaced by a witch and how she escaped that. Fun fact number three. 28 identical puppets of the character Coraline were created. Each took 10 people 4 months to build. These puppets are separated in two parts in the face. For the upper part of the face, so moving the eyes and the eyebrows, and the lower part of the face for the lips and mouth. These two parts, they could change them to different expressions. Fun fact number four. The character Coraline had 6,300 face pieces that will give 207,000 possible face combinations. Whoa. Fun fact number five. Completing the film involved more than 500 people over four years of production. And only the photography alone took 18 months. Fun fact number 6. Coraline's tiny gloves were knitted by hand by a miniature knitter. By a miniature knitter. Did these pairs of tiny things and the old knitted things were tiny knitted. She made 6 pairs of gloves with silk. It says that one single garment that was that small took in between six weeks to six months from conceptual design to the finished product. And the needles used to knit these things were as small as fine human hair. Tidy! <laughs> Fun fact number seven! The Jumping Mouse Circus sequence had as many as 51 carefully choreographed mice on the screen at once, each needing to be replaced with a slightly different mouse 12 times for every second of film. In the end, they had like over 650 different mice or 6,000 separate parts amazing and it took around two months to do fun fact number eight the total of face replacements created for each character on this film were 50,000 so each character had their own thing but incomplete all the characters had 15,000 replacement faces created fun fact number nine a total of 35 animators work on the film and each animator completed each week anywhere from 2 seconds to 6 seconds of footage. Fun fact number 10! Laika, the team Laika, the studio Laika, had done work on other films before like The Corpse Bride of Tim Burton but this was the first time venturing into a full feature of their own. 
thanks to Coraline, Leica started to be the greatest stop motion studio that it is today. Fun fact number 11. The little dolls on the movie were not on the book as well. This was an artistic decision made by Henry Selig that they will replace the rats on the book. Because in the book, the Beldam spies the real world with rats. They decided to replace it by a cute little doll that it will be giving also creepy feelings later. Now, friends, let's talk about some cute Easter eggs inside this movie. I already talked about one of them, that is the insect wallpaper. But let's talk about some other ones. First Easter egg. We see a face on the dollar bill that Coraline Dad gives to the movers. And the face on the one dollar bill is no other than the director of this movie, Henry Selig. Second easter egg. We see that when Coraline arrives to the other world the first time and meets his other father, his other father plays a song for her. And the easter egg inside here is that he plays this song as a cheerful way, but he only says a warning message. Let's hear it. Making up a song about Coraline. She's a peach. She's a doll. She's a pal of mine. She's as cute as a button in the eyes of everyone who ever laid their eyes on Coraline. When she comes around exploring, mom and I will never ever make it boring. Our eyes will be on Coraline. Ooh. Easter egg number three. If you see the first time we see the key to the other world, we didn't pay much attention to it. But if you see correctly and more into it, the key has the shape of a button. So it's a button key, meaning the danger that Coraline gonna go to. Easter egg number four. When Coraline goes down the first time to the other world and she is eating, the other mother says, let's go play outside in the rain, blah, 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 all this stuff. And she says, what rain? And then a thunder ta -ta, appears. And this thunder has the shape of a hand. And if you see closely, it's like the hand of the Beldam. Because later on, we see that the Beldam has this really rigged hands and really spiky hands. And that's the shape of her hand grabbing into Coraline. Easter egg number five. Remember on the part that we were saying just before when Coraline is eating and after that the Beldam gives her a big cake and this cake says welcome home. But Coraline gets weirded out by it and it's this welcome home but she didn't know she had another home. This is an illusion and that Coraline is now moved into this other place and she's trying to make it a home. And according to pseudoscience, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, graphology, a double loop on a lowercase o means the person who wrote it is lying. If you see closely, as there is no double loop on the lowercase o in welcome, but there is a double loop on the O in home, this little indicates that Coraline's other parents welcomes her, but she's not home. Easter egg number six, the frame silhouettes. So if you see closely, when Coraline is invited to eat at the dinner table, we can see behind her there is three frame pieces, and these frame pieces are one boy and two girls and if you look closely they look like the ghost children so the beldam frame her victims in the wall and coral didn't notice easter egg number seven is that the beldam every time she cooks a lot and if you see closely in every scene where they are eating she has nothing on her plate or in her cup. She doesn't drink anything, she doesn't eat anything, and no one notices. 
and like she doesn't even put something on her plate to do appearances that meaning that the beldam doesn't eat regular food but salt of children eighth and final easter egg when you see on a scene with Coraline's dad is playing with her before bed and she's talking to her when she's going to sleep, you see that Coraline's dad has a weird stain on his shirt and you say where he get it. And this comes from a deleted scene that didn't make the movie because maybe it wasn't relevant. But in the deleted scene, if you find it online, let me know. In the deleted scene, his father had a takeout on his hand and he was saying, mm, mm, that's a really good pizza or something like that. So this is a pizza stain, like a tomato stain that he had from this deleted scene. This mystery became a mystery on the movie because we didn't see that at the end. And well, friends, that is all for the first episodes of the Halloween month with Ali Lee. Hopefully you enjoy it. You like all the little tiny things that I told you about this movie. And now when you see this movie, Coraline, you will see these little Easter eggs that tell you so much. And there's so many hidden things on this movie. You can do theories for hours and hours with this movie. There are so many. I encourage you to watch them. They're really amusing. Again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in with us. And expect the new episode next week. Another fabulous movie that I will recommend for you on this Halloween month to see and to enjoy during this October month. So that you get all these spooky, creepy vibes. Please remember to hear us in all of the platforms so we are in Spotify, Deezer, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Google Podcasts and so many more. Don't know how more but many more. Also remember to follow us on our Instagram page. We are doing a lot of things and really cool things to give you other nice fun facts. Some other nice things. I will be posting fun facts about the movies and fun facts about the stuff that we will we'll be talking on the podcast before the episode airs. Also, there is a lot of cool things happening this month. I'm doing a lot of mini series of Legends of the Halloween. So if you want to know more, tune up to our Instagram page. It's at Aleli de Colores in Instagram. And if you don't know what I'm saying, go down on the webpage link and click on it and it will go to the Instagram link. And follow us, subscribe and enjoy this podcast. Love you guys. See you next week. Bye friends.